Hey, welcome to a new video. Dinosaurs lived during an era that began approximately 252 million years ago and ended about 66 million years ago. But have you ever thought about what existed before them? What are the largest creatures on Earth before the first dinosaur appeared? Today we'll show you 20 terrifying animals that lived before the dinosaurs. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 20. There's much debate about what came directly after the dinosaurs, but what existed before them? There was indeed a time prior. This prehistoric reptile called Dimetrodon existed during the Permian period, about 50 million years before the first dinosaurs appeared. Contrary to common belief, Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur. Dimetrodons were more closely related to therapsids, mammal-like reptiles. In fact, Dimetrodon showed more similarities to mammals than to dinosaurs. The name Dimetrodon can be misleading, as it's derived from one of its more obscure features, the presence of two different types of teeth in its jaws. Its dental arsenal included sharp canine teeth at the front, ideal for tearing into fresh prey, and molar-like teeth at the back, suitable for grinding tough muscle and bone fragments. Dimetrodon's most distinctive feature was its massive sail, a trait not seen again until the mid-Cretaceous Spinosaurus. This sail served multiple purposes. Since Dimetrodon was a slow-moving reptile with a cold-blooded metabolism, the sail likely functioned as a temperature-regulating device. Number 19. It's 250 million years ago, and you hear a terrifying, booming cry. What you likely heard is a Scutosaurus, also known as the Shield Lizard. Scutosaurus is an extinct genus of reptile covered with protective armor plates. Its unique leg orientation, with legs placed more centrally beneath its body, provided for a tall, imposing posture. Scutosaurus had a robust skeleton, supported by strong muscles and tough skin, making it a slow but well-protected creature. Evolved with teeth for grinding dry vegetation, it relied on its exceptional hearing and possibly roared loudly to communicate with others of its kind. It weighed up to about 2,535 pounds, comparable to a modern black rhino, and it measured about 8 foot 6 inches. Its entire body was covered with closely packed individual bony osteoderms, rather than forming a continuous plate. The upper jaw contained 18 teeth, while the lower jaw had 16, and its snout featured rows of blade-like teeth. Remarkably, it also had a small bony projection behind its skull. Number 18. Moshops, derived from the Greek words for calf face, is an extinct genus of therapsids that thrived during the Guadalupian epoch, about 265 to 260 million years ago. These heavily built creatures were herbivores, and there's evidence suggesting they may have spent some time in the water, akin to modern hippos. Remains of moss chops have been discovered in the Karoo region of South Africa, specifically belonging to the Tapanocephalus assemblage zone. Therapsids, including most chops, were synapsids, the dominant land animals, during a period ending about 252 million years ago. These unique creatures measured about 2.7 meters in length and had an average weight of 286 pounds. Moshops' distinctive thick skulls have led to speculation that they engaged in headbutting contests, similar to how we're cautioned about horses and kangaroos that can kick us. Number 17. Cynognathus, derived from the Greek words for dog jaw, stands out among the so-called mammal-like reptiles that existed during the mid-Triassic period. As a synodont, Cynognathus was a swift and fierce predator, resembling a smaller and more wild version of a modern wolf. Its evolutionary success is evident from the fact that its remains have been discovered on three continents. Africa, South America, and Antarctica. What makes Synonathus even more peculiar is its possession of numerous features typically associated with early prehistoric mammals. Paleontologists believe it had a thick fur and possibly gave birth to live young, a trait uncommon among reptiles that typically lay eggs. Moreover, it exhibited a strikingly mammal-like diaphragm, enabling it to breathe more efficiently. Perhaps most astonishingly, there is evidence suggesting it had a warm-blooded, mammal-like metabolism, setting it apart from most cold-blooded reptiles of its time. The combination of its mammal-like features and predator-like prowess likely made it highly lethal. Number 16. Estemenosuchus displayed the most intricate head ornamentation among herbivorous therapsids. The creature's head crests, resembling short deer antlers, were primarily display devices, with variations observed among different species. Its horns grew upward from the frontal skull bones. The exact dietary habits of Estemenosuchus remain a subject of debate among paleontologists. While some have pointed to its sharp canine teeth and incisors, suggesting a carnivorous diet, others argue that many herbivorous therapsids also had teeth resembling those of carnivores. The immense size and bulk of the animal, along with the orientation of its legs, indicate adaptations for a large digestive system and energy-efficient locomotion, more in line with herbivorous traits. This suggests that it might have been an omnivore, occasionally supplementing its plant-based diet with meat consumption. 
Estamina succuses limb orientation further supports its herbivorous tendencies. The hind limbs, placed directly beneath the hips, indicate a more energy-efficient form of locomotion, while the front limbs, spread to the sides, allowed for efficient browsing and maneuvering. Moreover, Steminosuchus's large size and mass have led to the suggestion that it was gigantothermic, with a low ratio of surface area to body mass, which would have led to a relatively constant internal temperature, similar to that of a warm-blooded creature. Number 15. The mighty terrestrial predator, Ariops, is an extinct genus of primitive amphibians, and its fossils have been found in Permian rocks in North America. The Permian period extended from 299 million to 251 million years ago. Ariops was a colossal creature, measuring over 6 feet 7 inches in length. Its large skull exhibited thick and uneven bones, characterized by prominent ridges. Remarkably, its eye sockets were large and upward-facing. Along the edges of its jaws and on the palate, it possessed large and pointed teeth. The strength and size of its spine and skeletal limb elements suggest that Ariops was well adapted for movement on land. Despite its short limbs, they were notably broad, and the shoulder and hip girdles were massive. The animal's skin featured bony knobs, likely serving as protective armor against predators. As a predator, Ariops primarily relied on fish as a food source, though it likely also hunted terrestrial vertebrates. Its limbs and rib structure suggest its exceptional ability to traverse terrestrial environments, making it one of the most successful early amphibians in this regard. Adaptations for land movement, combined with its impressive size and predatory nature, made Ariops a dominant force in the ancient Permian ecosystem. Number 14. Hesperornis, a large flightless bird, effortlessly navigated the oceans and captured fish with its toothed beak. Its relatively small wings were held close to its body and had little utility, except perhaps for aiding in steering underwater. Instead, it relied on its sturdy hind legs and swollen feet to chase prey and evade predators in the seas. With a flattened tail, this bird had the ability to change depth and direction underwater. Underwater, it displayed remarkable grace and agility while swimming. Its swollen feet propelled it beneath the water's surface, while its long neck allowed it to extract fish precisely from their hiding places. The bird was so well adapted to diving and swimming that walking on land proved to be an awkward endeavor. Likely, Hesperornis came ashore only for breeding and egg laying. However, both land and water posed threats to it, as the aquatic mosasaur Tylosaurus considered the creature a tasty meal. An interesting fact is that it likely fed and nested in a similar manner to penguins. Number 13. Gorgonopsia, named after the Gorgon from Greek mythology, were a group of predatory mammals that thrived before the age of the dinosaurs. They were the top predators of their time before becoming extinct around 250 million years ago. These beastly creatures were the largest predators of the late Paleozoic, the period just before the emergence of dinosaurs. With a length of up to 10 feet, Gorgonopsians were among the most ferocious predators to ever roam the Earth. Their heads exhibited a somewhat canine appearance, adorned with large upper canines of up to 4 inches long. Despite their somewhat mammalian characteristics, they had eyes on the sides of their heads, similar to those of lizards. Their bodies were likely covered in scales rather than fur. The overall appearance of Gorgonopsians would have resembled a cross between a lion and a large monitor lizard. However, these creatures met their demise during the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, the most severe extinction event in Earth's history. Number 12. Arthrodires, also known as giant fishes, possessed unique head plates that differed from traditional one-piece skulls. One of the few fossils found of the species, the Rocky River Titanicthus, boasted an armored head plate that was nearly four feet wide and roughly as long. The body of the animal, composed of cartilage and soft tissue, did not fossilize for unknown reasons. However, it is estimated that the body was three times longer than the head plate. Titanicthus possessed a characteristic lower jawbone, known as an inferognathal, on each side of its mouth. The inferognathals of this fish were long and curved, ending in a sharp, tooth-like point. Titanic this represents one of the last members of the armored Arthrodires, a group that, for reasons that remain unclear, became extinct about 360 million years ago. The discovery that Titanic this may have been a gigantic filter feeder underscores the fact that Arthrodires were not an evolutionary dead end. Instead, they continued to evolve into new and more specialized forms until their eventual extinction. Number 11. Ophiacodontidae, an extinct family of early Eupolycosaurians, thrived during the Carboniferous and Permian periods. The lifestyle and hunting behavior of Ophiacodon, however terrifying it may have been, remained the subject of ongoing debate. Some experts propose that it was a semi-aquatic carnivore, feeding on fish and amphibians. This hypothesis is supported by the presence of numerous small teeth, ideal for grasping slippery prey like fish. Additionally, the notch at the end of the upper jaw, a common feature among piscivores, further supports this argument. Others, however, argue that the deep skull of the animal would have hindered its aquatic capabilities, and its limb structure suggests a primarily terrestrial mode of locomotion. 
It likely also employed some strategies to locate food. Regardless of its preferred habitat, Ophiacodon was among the most formidable predators of its time, possibly only threatened by other members of its own kind. The deep skull of the animal suggests the presence of powerful muscles capable of strong biting force. Furthermore, Ophiacodon's teeth exhibit developing size variations that would become more pronounced in later Polycosaurians. The family Ophiacodon today eventually died out by the Kungurian or Rhodian stage, allowing for the rise of anomodonts, theriodonts, and diapsid reptiles. Number 10. Therosophalians are one of the three therapsid lineages that survived the catastrophic mass extinction at the end of the Permian. This event, considered the largest mass extinction in Earth's history, wiped out up to 96% of all marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species. Therocephalia thrived during the Permian and Triassic periods, with their fossils abundant in the Karoo of South Africa, as well as in Russia, China, Tanzania, Zambia, and Antarctica. The name Therocephalians, meaning beast heads, is derived from their large skulls, indicating their carnivorous nature. Like other non-mammalian synapsids, therocephalians were once considered reptiles resembling mammals. Although most of them became extinct during the Permian-Triassic extinction, some representatives of the subgroup known as Eutherocephalia managed to survive into the early Triassic. Some of these genera are thought to have been venomous, making them the oldest known tetrapods with such features. However, the last remaining Therocephalians died out by the beginning of the Middle Triassic, possibly due to climate change and increasing competition with cynodonts, archosaurs, and other reptile groups. Number 9. Nothosaurus, Greek for false lizard, roamed the Earth and oceans for nearly 50 million years during the Triassic period. With its finned forelimbs and hind limbs, flexible knees and ankles, long neck, tapered body, and an array of teeth, it was a formidable predator. Although resembling modern seals, paleontologists speculate that Nothosaurus may have also spent some time on land. It is evident that this reptile breathed air, as evidenced by the presence of two nostrils on the top of its snout. While adept at swimming, Nothosaurus was not as well adapted to fully aquatic life as later Pliosaurs and Plesiosaurs, such as Elasmosaurus. In the water, it used a combination of its tail and finned limbs to propel itself. Its jaws were filled with long, slender teeth protruding from the mouth and interlocking when the jaws closed. This tooth arrangement served as an effective trap to capture slippery prey, such as fish. While Nothosaurus is often depicted as a dedicated fish eater, there is evidence that it also preyed on small and young marine reptiles. The presence of juvenile placodonts, such as Cymotus, found in the stomach of smaller nothosaurs, supports this hypothesis. Number 8. The T-Rex would have cried at the sight of Gorgonopsids. One alone is terrifying, but they were terrifying at an apocalyptic level, and they likely hunted in groups. Gorgonopsids, the dominant predators of the late Permian, roamed South Africa, with some specimens also found in European Russia and more recently in China. Some Gorgonopsids had incredibly large skulls, nearly 40 inches or half a meter long. Leconops, one of the well-studied Gorgonopsids, was a 3-foot, 1-meter-long predator, whose name translates to wolf face. Its skull resembled that of a wolf, which was elongated, low, and slender. Notably, both the upper and lower jaws of this creature contain long canine teeth, reminiscent of the saber-toothed cats of the Pleistocene. These sharp teeth enabled Gorgonopsids to stab and tear their large prey. The agility and speed of these animals were facilitated by their light and agile skeletons, indicating an active lifestyle. Their relatively long legs compared to their body size suggest their ability to move at a rapid pace. Number 7. Caprosuchus, also known as the boar crocodile, was a remarkable creature that lived during the mid-Cretaceous period, primarily in what's now North Africa. Estimated to be 10 feet to 3 meters in length, another striking feature of this creature was its three sets of large, boar-like tusks protruding from both above and below its skull. The lower jaw had a notch that fit into corresponding notches in the upper jaw, preventing the jaw from being held permanently open by its own teeth. This unusual jaw structure allowed it to inflict more devastating damage to its prey compared to other crocodilians. It's believed to have been more than just an aquatic predator. Unlike many prehistoric crocodiles with upward-facing eyes, this one had forward-facing eyes a feature commonly found in terrestrial predators. This suggests that this creature likely roamed the African plains in search of prey, similar to the hunting behavior of large cats that we see today. Number 6. Astropus, named for the star-straped plates covering its body, was a fascinating jawless fish that thrived during the that thrived during the Ordovician period. This ancient fish exhibited similarities to other jawless fish. This creature is known for possessing a lateral line, a series of sensory organs running along the length of its body a feature also found in modern fish. Fossils of this creature have been discovered in Bolivia, contributing to our understanding of its distribution. Based on nearly complete fossils, it's estimated to have reached a length of 8 inches. The body of Astraspis was covered with small plate-like scales, each smaller than 1 millimeter, along the flexible tail. 
In contrast, the anterior body was adorned with larger plate scales measuring over 2 millimeters. The fish likely had relatively large, laterally positioned eyes and eight gill openings on each side. The protective bony plates covering it were composed of aspidine, a substance chemically similar to the teeth of modern sharks. Number 5. Arthropleura, one of the largest terrestrial invertebrates that have ever existed, once roamed the ancient shores of England, approximately 359 to 299 million years ago. During the Carboniferous period, Earth's atmosphere was significantly richer in oxygen than it is today. The abundance of carbon locked in woody plants, which were difficult to decompose, contributed to the oxygen-rich environment. While our current atmosphere contains about 21% oxygen, oxygen levels during the Carboniferous exceed 26% and sometimes reach levels higher than 30%. This period is known for the dominance of colossal insects, such as Maganura, dragonfly-like insects the size of birds. The higher oxygen levels during the Carboniferous likely played a significant role in the growth of these giant insects. Insects have a unique respiratory system, which delivers oxygen directly to the tissues of their bodies. This system allows oxygen to enter their bodies at a relatively slower pace compared to other animals that rely on blood to transport oxygen. Number 4. Dimorphodon, a member of the pterosaur family, owed its name to meaning two-shaped tooth. This flying reptile existed during a bygone era and had a wingspan of about four feet. Its beak resembled that of a modern puffin, contributing to its unique appearance. With a large head characterized by broad and deeply toothed jaws, Dimorphodon exhibited distinct features. At the end of its pointed and elongated tail, there was a diamond-shaped flap of skin, while its neck was notably short. The remarkably large head of this creature likely served as a display of courtship behavior. Unlike other pterosaurs, Dimorphodon had legs that protruded sideways, resulting in a distinctive walking posture. This unique leg structure distinguishes it from other pterosaurs. The unique leg configuration suggests that it spent its time hanging from tree branches during non-flying periods, similar to modern bats. The adaptation allowed it to maneuver and rest in different environments. Dimorphodon inhabited the Earth approximately 165 million years ago. As a carnivorous creature, it primarily fed on fish, showcasing its adaptation to an aquatic diet. Number 3. Agiracasis, an extinct genus of anthropod, offers a terrifying glimpse into ancient seas. Fossils of this remarkable creature, discovered in Morocco, reveal fascinating adaptations, including modified legs, gills on its back, and a specialized filter feeding system. This monstrous creature, which lived approximately 480 million years ago, had a striking appearance reminiscent of a cross between a shrimp and a lobster but its size sets it apart from its relatives, as it's believed to be one of the largest creatures that's ever lived on Earth. Instead of actively hunting for prey like many other similar anthropods, it used a net-like appendage to capture plankton. Number 2. Thylacolio carnifex, the largest carnivorous mammal known in Australia, was firstly described by Sir Richard Owen as one of the fiercest and most destructive carnivores. This remarkable creature likely preyed on the Pleistocene magafauna, including the giant Diprotodon. Researchers speculate that the creature may have been an ambush predator or even a scavenger. It boasted massive shearing cheek teeth and a gigantic thumb claw that may have been used to tear open its prey. Standing about 2 feet 5 inches at the shoulder and measuring approximately 5 feet from head to tail, individuals of the species were quite substantial. Based on measurements of various specimens, their average weight ranged from 220 to 350 pounds. This places the creature in a size range comparable to that of female lions and tigers. Number 1. During the prehistoric era before the age of dinosaurs, the oceans were home to a diverse array of terrifying armored predators. Among these ancient creatures, one group stood out as particularly unique and frightening, the Euryptidids, commonly known as sea scorpions. These creatures came in various sizes, ranging from dimensions of a human hand to surpassing the proportions of an adult man. Euryptidids were known for their imposing presence and terrifying hunting abilities. As a colossal and tenacious order of heavily armored anthropods, they possess spiny limbs and gripping claws that render their prey completely defenseless. These boneless predators thrived for a long period, from around 460 million years ago to the Permian, around 248 million years ago. During their reign, these creatures witnessed the evolution of the earliest ancestors of corals and even the emergence of the earliest fishes. While the majority of them lived in marine environments, a select few ventured into freshwater systems over time. Among these bold explorers, Jacloropterus reigned supreme. It was the largest known Euryptidid, measuring around 8 feet. And when including its appendages, its total was even greater, making it the most colossal and formidable anthropod to have ever have existed. It's believed that this colossal predator hunted other anthropods, and possibly even fish. Which prehistoric animal would you like to see brought back to life? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.